Good morning. Hope you slept well. Happy Sunday to you. I've got some stuff I'm doing in the backyard today. I'm, I dug uh, nine 42 inch holes for the deck that I'm building in the backyard. Some interesting questions lately. One of them being, can I add additives to my oil and will those additives make a difference? Yes and no. The reason I say yes and no is it's based on the way the manufacturer has the oil set up and how it works. And what I mean by that is if I took a bottle of MOS2 and I added it to Pennzoil Platinum Ultra, would that MOS2 actually increase the molly inside that Pennzoil Platinum Ultra? The answer to that is you'd have to put an absurd amount in there to make it really increase it. And why is that? Well, there's a relationship between the detergents and dispersants and the actual uh, friction modifiers that are inside there, uh, lubricants, stuff like that, that actually make things worse, work. So if you try to take a bottle of MOS2 and dump it to dump it into something like Pennzoil Platinum Ultra that uses a tri-nuclear tri -nuclear technology Infinium uh, Molly, just like uh, Mobile does, you're not really going to increase the count of molly in that because it's first of all it's not the same type of molly that's being used in that product which is a triple formula uh, product so whenever you see on Pennzoil Platinum Ultra how it says it's got 90 97 whatever molly that's actually like three times the amount of molly that you're actually seeing so it's like 270 280 parts per million molly in that Pennzoil Platinum Ultra, but it's a Infinium Molly, which is a Molly that's much better than your standard M MOS2 Molly. Most Mollies are like uh, Mod or something like that that are used in uh, newer engine oils. Uh, MOS2 is an older technology that you still find in like Toyota oil that Mobile, from what I understand, Mobile makes for Toyota. They use the old MOS2 technology for them or Idemetsu or like Nissan or Mazda or something like that that have extremely high molly counts. That's the old type of molly. Now, I recently did a test. Let me show you the test. Before we get into the results of the test that I did uh, with molly additive Schaefer's. Um, remember that where people were like, oh, you didn't quite do the ratio correctly you actually dumped too much of the molly additive the stabilizer into the Schaefer you did like more like instead of 10% you only did like or you did like 20% whatever I went over a little bit sue me uh, so the number should go up right theoretically um, so we're gonna look at that here in a second there's a relationship between the type of molly that's molly that's used in the oil and zinc they have a very, very good relationship. So if you're dumping uh, a molly additive in an oil that is not chemically formulated to um, react with that type of molly, you're actually going to take away from the numbers. You can actually have an adverse effect. By adding more to it, you could reduce other numbers in the process of doing so because that oil is not designed to be run that way. It's true. Here's the product right here, Schaefer, Molly EP oil treatment. What does it say? For gasoline or diesel engines can be used in petroleum based and synthetic based oils. Can be used, but it's not going to boost the Molly if the oil is not formulated for this. Friction modified with Micron Molly and Penetro to provide extreme pressure protection for critical components. Increase compression through better ring seal, eliminates sticking valves and lifters, and reduces blow by. When you dump this stuff out of this container, it looks like Lucas Oil Stabilizer. Literally. It looks like there is 
like a straight oil stabilizer like 110 weight plus oil it's thick 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 stuff and I dumped I guess I did my measurements wrong the last time when I did my little vial I made five marks on it and uh, it says this treats up to five quarts I guess I did too much of this by a hair and uh, you would think that well okay you did too much the numbers will go up then it is a molly EP oil or an, an additive um, so reading this and seeing this this molly EP oil treatment there must be some additional benefit to give to an engine increasing in it and in increasing the molly right that's the general consensus and people were asking me to buy this stuff and try it well let's look at the virgin analysis versus this in a sample size when it's used all right so here we are Schaefer supreme 9000 5w30 we will look right here at this molly portion on the top let's look at the whole thing but 341 341 parts per million molly standard on average is about 113 uh, 203 boron, 11 silicon, 9 sodium, calcium 1137, magnesium 481, phosphorus 680, zinc 761, 63 sus, CST 1106, flashpoint 425, and we have a TBN rating of 6.3. Not a bad oil. Decent looking. Pretty good oil. Decent looking. A lot of people love it. Say it quietens the engine down a lot. Heavy duty industry uses it quite a bit. Uh, let's look at it with up to 20% of the EP added to the sample size and see what the numbers look like. Here we are, Schaefer Supreme 9000 5DB30 with Molly EP added to it. Molybdenum up top here. 282. We dropped almost 60 points. Yeah. Potassium one, boron went down, sodium went down, calcium went down, magnesium went down, phosphorus went down, zinc went down. It all went down, right? At least I think it did. Susfus, uh, this it really couldn't be tested because the oil was too thick with the additive in it and the sample size. And TBM rating of five point three. Yeah. It made it pretty much everything reduced because of the, of the relationship. So, by putting as little as this much, this much in a little sample container, it diluted it that much to the point where it reduced the entire makeup, healthy makeup of the dispersant detergent pack, reduced the amount of zinc that was in it because it took up for the well-balanced oil that was in there, and reduced the molly that was in the formula. It didn't help it. It didn't add to it. So my question to you is this. Do you think adding additives to an oil that already has a well-balanced formula is a great idea? Probably not. Do they make these additives to help in extreme situations where you might be using a really, really, really cheap oil or something like that that might help boost it? It's hard to say because even those are well formulated in their regard to what they are uh i know recently there's another dude that does a lot of oil his, his icons got a lot of oil filters there's another guy out here who's got a lot of oil filters like as his pick icon and he recently did one where it was like he used that mos2 from liquid molly and he sent it off in a sample size and then he sent off regular and with the mos2 added to the formula it was actually reduced the amount of molly that was in it and i reached out to uh anthony bearded ford tech um and i was talking to him a little bit about it i said what's interesting is i seen that dude's video but remember back at my schaefer supreme ep the same thing happened to me when i put that molly booster in it or that ep in it it reduced the amount of additive and i said you know, that's why I always get on people for putting that Lucas oil stabilizer in their vehicle. They're dumping a bottle and then they dump another bottle sometimes. Yeah, it may help quieten things down. And yes, it may help with, uh, you know, some lifter clatter and stuff like that. 
but overall dumping that stuff into your oil is just reducing the overall entire ad pack there's nothing that special to it and uh you know me and anthony were talking about it and i got to thinking also after i got off the phone with him uh that's that's particularly why I don't like dumping a bunch of oils together either though is because everybody doesn't use the same molly I think what what is one molly called MODTC another one's MOS2 another one's Infinium uh and the Infinium is the trinuclear uh setup that Mobile and Shell use in their oil now because they don't have to use as much of it because it's like triple at a lower amount it's triple what it actually pops up as you know and how it acts so where you see like mobile pops up on the scale at like 60 it's like 180 molly pops up with their or uh pennzoil ultra pops up at like 91 93 or something it's like 270 or above it's a uh, tri-nuclear uh molly technology so it's like three times the amount but you actually only have to use uh you can use lower and still add more quality base stock to it so that's why i really like the platinum series uh oils valvoline and in um and pennzoil platinum right now are my go-to for oils for most people and they really notice a huge difference when they're done the mobile stuff it's all right uh but i just noticed too much engine clatter at about two or three thousand miles after running it i just don't care for it um but in general, me and Anthony were talking about this stuff, and I said, you know, this doesn't seem, it seems off to me. When you add additives to oil that's already formulated, it actually reduces the overall capacity at which it performs. And Anthony was like, well, Lake Speed Jr., the oil, lubrication oil specialist uh, that's on his channel sometimes, uh, they have talked about this already. And he has basically said the same exact thing, and he works in the industry. He specializes in this. It's not necessary to add additives to engine oil for the simple fact that when you do that, you're actually reducing the capacity at which it works because it's not designed or formulated in that oil at the time. There has to be a direct relationship to how it's actually formulated and made because when you dump stuff to it, you actually look at the numbers overall and it starts reducing critical components in that oil because they don't work very well with each other after it's been added after the fact. And if it's not the same type of molly, the same type of zinc, you're going to do more damage than good in terms of actually raising numbers. So it doesn't work that way. So should you add additives to your oil? A simple answer to that is no. Just find a good quality balanced oil. Use that oil. Most oils on the shelf are going to be sufficient to what you need. You're not going to have to worry about, oh, is, is, is castrol better than pennzoil? Is pennzoil better than valvoline? Is valvoline better than this? Is this? At the end of the day, as long as you're changing the oil and you're putting a decent quality filter on your vehicle, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it works for you and you're taking care of that vehicle and you love it. Now, we have our preferences because we don't like a lot of clattery engine noise and stuff. But if you run mobile, run mobile. If you run Pennzoil Platinum, run Pennzoil Platinum. Pennzoil Conventional. Run. If you run Valvoline, run Valvoline. If you run Idemetsu, run Idemetsu. It's, it's up to you. But a lot of these oils, like I recently got an oil analysis back. It was a 0W16 um, oil from Toyota. It had like 686 parts per million molly. And I was thinking to myself... What is the reason for this here? Oh, well, Mobile still uses the MOS2 technology, the old outdated stuff for Toyota, and that's how they build their formula. So they need a lot of Molly, or they show a lot of Molly because it's still the old school formula. Idemetsu, the same thing. Mazda, the same thing. They use the old MOS2 technology for their Molly, and that's why you get these extremely high numbers because they're not, they're not, using the MODTC, they're not using the Infinium uh, trinuclear setup that Mobile and, and uh, Shell is using now. So that's why you're seeing those numbers. Adding any additive to that is not necessarily going to make it increase. And it has to be blended a certain way and put together a certain way from the distributor, the people that are, made, that are distributing manufacturing it. You go to dump stuff in there, and I know these these companies make these things, and they're supposed to be boosters for the oil that's 
unless it's an actual like booster like a marble mystery oil or a sea foam where the whole purpose of it is to get into and clean out areas or lubricate uh in a, a different way sea foam and marble mystery oil Marvel Mystery Oil Synthetic, the new PAO base, seem to work pretty good. Uh, those, I notice a difference, but those are not chemicals that you can really test for in a regular oil analysis. You're not going to be able to send off and get the exact results back on like sea foam or Marvel Mystery Oil and figure out uh, what's in that product. Uh, it's, they're made different, they're formulated different. They're formulated to actually work with the engine oils and stuff that you already have. Uh, if you've noticed online, you'll have a guy, there's a, there's a bunch of videos where you get the Chevy and the lifter tick. And there's a couple guys in particular that went to the store and grabbed a bottle of Marvel Mystery Oil. And as the engine's running and ticking, they take the stuff and they just dump it right down the engine. And then within moments, you all of a sudden, that tick, 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 It's gone. The tick is gone. The stuff mixes with the oil. Yes, it does thin it out just a little bit. Um, but it gets in those lifters and stuff like that and starts lubricating a little bit better. Starts cleaning out some slowly. So some of the stuff works, but when it says boosters, when they're boosters too, like the Molly and the Zinc and some, I just use a good quality formulated engine oil. If you got a lifter tick or something like that and you want to use some sea foam or some Marvel Mystery Oil, it, you know, a lot of times, uh, there's no issue there. You're fine. In closing, should you? If you don't have no problems, if you don't have any engine problems or anything like that, should you add oil stabilizers and and uh, and additives and stuff like Molly boosters and things? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. The only thing that I've ever found to actually work a little bit is the the Marble Mystery Oil, Marble Mystery Oil Synthetic, the Sea Foam stuff. Uh, helps do a little cleaning while you're driving uh, because of the naphthenic and uh, PAO base and the mineral aspect behind cleaning. That's what they do, though. That's their purpose is to do that. These other engine oils and stuff. I think some people need to understand as well that. Uh, there's like the old wives tale about, uh, just add, add diesel oil to the engine. It'll clean it out because it's got super high detergent pack. It's not necessarily true. That's not what happens with that. Um, excessive amounts of calcium and magnesium can be detrimental to the health of engines anyway. So that's why they formulate things a specific way. Uh, when you take diesel oil and you add it to an engine, you think that extra calcium and magnesium and stuff is just going to randomly, like, scrubbing bubbles get in there, like the foam stuff that you spray in your shower walls. It's going to make that scum just lift off, and you're just going to wash it right into the filter and stuff. That's how it works. That's not how it works at all. There's not a single oil on the market that actually does any kind of cleaning to what's already been done previously. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, that sludge and that varnish build up, and then residue that's in there and get that get that really high detergent oil that's not the purpose of it that's not what it does high detergent oils don't actually clean what's already been damaged high detergent oils stop things from happening further that's why diesel oil has such high detergent because of the amount of soot load that is in that engine and how ashy that oil and stuff is it needs to be able to keep that stuff dispersed and not cleaning this stuff so when you change the oil it washes it out its job is to not go in there and clean what's happened from before. Yes, oil companies will advertise that it cleans or whatever. It does not clean what's previously been damaged and built up. It cleans moving forward and stops things from attaching. So it keeps it dispersed and detached from stuff. Make that very, very clear. Okay. That's all I got for today. This is a long video. Hope you guys have learned something from here, from this. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, An Thank you, Anthony, and uh, thank you, Lake Speed, uh, for helping bring all this together. I appreciate it. Be blessed.